Welcome to 20th Century Boy. My name is Michael Magorium, and this is the inside of my Emporium. <laughs> uh, that My name is Radio Mike. Welcome to my podcast, 20th Century Boy. Every week we do a different name at the start, and this week's was sent in by a listener on Instagram. However, I... um. I forgot your name and I I don't think I'm going to go find that message. I get a lot of DMs, guys. I don't have time to dig through all of them. Michael Magorium and this is the inside of my Emporium. Really just does not sound very good. But yes, as I said, my name is Radio Mike. This is my podcast. It's a podcast about me, Radio Mike, young radio producer and, I don't know, comedy inclined person from Melbourne, Australia, which is currently... In lockdown again. And look, it was supposed to be a week. Here we are. Seven days later, we're still in lockdown, supposedly for another week. But I hate to break it to you, Melbourne Melbourneites. I I have a feeling we're we're back in we're back in lockdown for a little while now. Uh, because this is exactly what happened last time. The cases just got out of control. Sorry guys, if you're watching the video podcast version, all of these goes up go up on YouTube on my channel, search Radio Mike. I feel like I'm like, I the camera, I've set it up. So like I'm too low and I'm trying to like get higher in the frame, but I just, I'm just going to do it like this. Sorry to the audio listeners who probably didn't understand that. So a few updates I took last week off, just feeling a bit burnt out. And I think it's good to just sometimes take a week off. Thanks to everyone for their support. Uh, when I mentioned that in the discord, Get in the podcast Discord if you're not. It's a group chat up. It's a lot of fun. Lots of different channels in there. Um, lockdown has been pretty boring. Not much to do. And what 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 I was going to say is that, oh yeah, I still haven't watched Mr. Megorium's Wonder Emporium. For all of you who were wondering, I did promise I would watch it two weeks ago. I still haven't watched it. I may never watch it, but I will try and watch it very soon. But um. Yeah, here we are in lockdown. Not much happening at all. And I hope you're all well. Obviously, you can still win the podcast, but I would actually say this week, winning the podcast, uh, because we are Australia's only winnable podcast, winning the podcast is actually probably, I'm going to say not possible this week. Because think about it, like we're in lockdown, but I guess that the podcast is evergreen. But at the moment, if you're in Melbourne, I'm in Melbourne. See, it's highly unlikely you'll see me in public and therefore highly unlikely that you will win the podcast. So for the first week in a very long time ever, actually, I'm going to put it out there. Don't do your 360 this week. That's how you, that's how you win the podcast. By the way, you do a 360 on the spot. If you see me during your 360, you win the pod this week. Don't do it. In fact, make a point of not doing your 360. Specifically, don't do your 360 this week uh, as a protest to lockdown and the government. A few updates. Number one, chicken episode 2.0. In the last episode, uh, I saw a sign on a chicken shop in Kensington that said that they were the second best chicken in Kensington, which I thought was really funny. I rang them up. And uh, look, at some point, probably post lockdown, myself and any listener who would like to come are going to go to Chicken Episode 2.0, the second best chicken in Kensington. Uh, Radio Jared Hardringe. Welcome to the Radio Family. I believe this is your first ever contribution to the show. Great to have you. He sent a photo of himself. He was going for a walk during lockdown and he... He sent a photo of himself out the front of chicken episode 2.0. He said, I'm using my two hours of exercise to locate the best chicken in Kensington. So I think, are we, do we have a two hour exercise thing now? Okay. So he's actually gone out to find the best chicken in Kensington, which obviously isn't chicken episode 2.0 because they are specifically the second best. Um, But yeah, another update on my coffee story. I told a story about how... I was in a business-like setting 
and I accidentally took a huge sip out of someone's coffee. I've got a coffee here. It's a cold day here in Melbourne. I'm going to take a sip. Hope you don't mind. Mm. It's very fresh. It's very nice. Um, I took a huge sip of someone's coffee. Don't think they saw, but when they left, they didn't take the coffee. Now, lots of feedback coming in. Radio Hamilton, welcome to the radio family. I think you might be overthinking the coffee thing, Mike. Radio Lazar, welcome to the RF. The coffee thing was massive overthinking by Mike. It's funny when you're someone who always overthinks things. I get so lost sometimes in just thinking about things. And then as soon as I try to explain what I'm thinking to someone, I just realize how dumb I've been this entire time. Me, in a nutshell. Radio Alex Sky. Everyone's had their two cents on the coffee incident, but yeah, you definitely overthought it. I do it heaps as well. I think it's mainly a matter of focusing more on the facts you can actually prove of a given situation rather than interpretations of it you could create, but it's definitely hard to do if you've got used to it. Radio Mel Bra on TikTok, we do have a TikTok, and I think this is the same as Radio Mel. She's just commented, Mike Love, it's the Big Poo 2.0. And uh, finally, Radio Whitey, welcome to the RF. You're definitely overthinking it, Mike. She's 100% forgotten it. She's in the zone on a podcast and hasn't thought about the coffee at all. Totally forgetting it as she left. Um, So thank you to all of those people. And and like, I guess I was overthinking now that I think about it, but I just wanted to tell it on the podcast, get your guys' thoughts, you know, bounce some ideas around. Radio Whitey also adds, because last week, and this was pretty controversial, I mentioned that like, I hate re-watching stuff because I constantly feel like I'm running out of time and need to experience everything. So I hate re-watching movies and re-watching TV shows and stuff. Radio Whitey added, also the movie and TV show thing you talked about is just anxiety too. You have plenty of time in your life to re-watch thing. Yes, you have a finite lifespan, but it's a lot longer than you think. Rewatch things you enjoy. You're not wasting anything. And even if you are, who cares? Life isn't about optimizing every moment. It's about enjoyment. I like that because I feel as though it got me thinking about this because I have this thing where like, I don't want to rewatch anything. Like I said, because I feel like I'm wasting life and might as well be experiencing more. But yeah, it's definitely an anxiety thing because when I think about it, I... I, I don't know. It's weird. Like sometimes I'm like, I think I get uh, bogged down in like the, the choice paralysis of stuff. Like I see shows on Netflix and I'm like, oh, I could watch that, but it's like a three week commitment and I could be watching all this other stuff. So then I just end up watching nothing. And I hate TV shows because they're such a big commitment to watch through them. Like I was like, after I watched the friends reunion, I was like, oh, I should watch all of friends again. But I'm like, nah, it'll take too long which sucks. And I want to drop that because I, yeah, I don't rewatch movies, even though I'm like, oh, I'd love to like replay this game or rewatch this movie. But my brain's like, no, you should try something new, do something new because you know, your time's finite. But I guess, it, yeah, that that's a great point by Whitey that life isn't about optimizing every moment, which I feel like I have to do. Like I constantly have to be like optimizing every moment to get the maximum out of every second, which fucks me, I think. So I'm going to be trying to not do that as much, hopefully. Um, But thank you for all your feedback on the coffee incident. Clearly, I was overthinking, as is very evident. Uh, I do want to talk about something a little bit sad for a moment. But but sad, it is very sad, but also it it kind of leads into awesomeness. Because speaking of... um, Speaking of re-watching stuff, on the weekend, I decided to re-watch... For the first time in many, many years, the 2004 comedy music film School of Rock, which if you have not seen School of Rock, stop listening right now. No, finish this episode of the podcast and then go. It's on Netflix in Australia. Go and watch School of Rock. I understand a lot of listeners of this show are younger than me. Um, School of Rock came out in 2004. I was 10 years old. This movie changed my entire life. And uh, re-watching it over the weekend, it holds up. Like, it is still one of the funniest and just just one of the, just one of the best movies ever made. Like, uh, it's not even like... And I think it is like 
very well regarded as a very good film. Like, I don't think that's just me exaggerating it. I think like most people would agree that this is a very good movie. And if you haven't seen it, yeah, I highly recommend you watch it. Now, the reason I decided to rewatch it and I want to talk about it because this movie was incredibly important to me in my life, a huge poignant uh, movie of my life that I can quote nearly word for word and I love it so much. And if you're unfamiliar with, with the movie... The movie uh, stars Jack Black in what I would consider the role he was born to play. Like, this was the role that Jack Black was destined to play. I think it is is his best performance in any film, and he absolutely nailed it. Um, Jack Black uh, needs to make a lot of money to pay rent to his housemate and best friend, who is a substitute teacher. So he poses as, as his friend goes into a school to make money and realizes that the kids in the class are really good at music and then decides to start a band with them, uh, essentially lying to them and deceiving them, but really connecting with them on music and helping all these kids be themselves and learn uh, to love music. And it's just an awesome movie. The kids are great actors. Um, they the, Each kid feels really unique uh, in the band and in the class itself. And anyway, one of the lead children in that film, Freddie Jones, is the character's name. You wouldn't come to work hungover unless you're an alcoholic. Dude, you got a disease. Hmm. Hmm. What's your name? Freddie Jones. Hmm, Freddie Jones. Shut up! He is the drummer in the School of Rock. He was like the cool punk kind of kid, played by an actor called Kevin Clark. Uh... Kevin Clark died. He died suddenly and unexpectedly in a, a a car a collision with a car while he was on his bike, and it is an absolute tragedy. I think he was like thirty years old or thirty two years old. He was a little older than me. We've got a mission. Putting on a great show is the most important thing you can do. One great rock show can change the world. Do you understand me? Yeah. This really kind of startled me a bit because it was just like you watch this film and and knowing that 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 character who was he's he's one of the the main characters in the film with a lot of development and you know was one of those kids that everybody kind of wanted to be when they were young like he was the cool kid in the class like the rebel kid he played the drums he was very cool and I just wanted to do a little tribute to Kevin Clark, who, you know, essentially was an actor in that film. He, he None of those kids in the band were really actors. They were just cast because they could play the instruments. So he never went on to be like a, an actor after that, but he always continued to play the drums. And I think I just want to do a small tribute here to Kevin Clark, who played Freddie Jones in School of Rock. Come on, man. Quit goofing around. This is serious business. We're on a mission. One great rock show can change the world. In a role that I think he really, really nailed, and it is very sad to see that he's gone. Um, A lot of... This happened a few weeks ago, but I missed a week, so I didn't talk about it then. But I'm really upset, mainly because this movie was so important to me. And I think, like, the, the thing about School of Rock is... I just feel like it's a movie that if you saw it when you were that age, when you were the same age as the kids in the class, you wanted to be one of the kids in that class. You wanted to be like, I don't know, you wanted to be part of the School of Rock. You wanted to be there. And I reckon I watched that movie a hundred times as a kid. What was your name? Katie. Katie, what was that thing you were playing today? The big thing? Cello. Okay, this is a bass guitar, and it's the exact same thing, but instead of playing like this, you tip it on the side, cello, you've got a bass. Try it on. I know all the songs. I, I It introduced me to the, the soundtrack was so great. It had so many amazing bands. It introduced me to so many amazing songs as well. And yeah, I just think it was this weird moment when I read that, that Kevin Clark had died, and you look at him with his, you know, baby face in this film, and knowing that he's no longer with us is very, very sad. And I went and like looked at a bunch of the, the child stars on Instagram and a lot of them were posting about it and talking about it and were really sad. And 
it's pretty cool because like there's the 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 kids who are all grown up now they've, there's been school of rock reunions where they've all performed together like it was a small class of like maybe 15 kids and all of them are pretty identifiable and they're all pretty unique and they all have their own little story beats in this film um so yeah i again i'm very sad and i really recommend you go and watch this film and uh this movie, it just got me into music. It made me want to explore music and discover music. It made me want to play the guitar, which I wouldn't do for another 10, no, yeah, for another 10 years after seeing it, I wouldn't learn guitar. But I wanted to be one of the kids in the School of Rock. I wanted to perform. I used to imagine myself being in it. Like, it really sparked my imagination, and I loved it so much. And, um, I yeah, I guess... I just wanted to talk about it at length on this podcast because the character development, the comedy, the music, this film just hits the mark on everything it was trying to do the entire time it was trying to do it. And yeah, I think this film was revolutionary for a lot of kids and it's definitely a kid's film, but as an adult, like going back to it, I had goosebumps at a lot of moments particularly the last uh, act, the last part of the film where they perform at the Battle of the Bands. Now, can I please have the attention of the class? Today's assignment. <laughs> um, that's a huge moment in the film where you just see everything that's happened throughout the film kind of come to an end, kind of come to fruition, everyone doing their best. Um yeah, lots of goosebumps, lots of uh, nostalgia, lots of laughs. Like I said, it's Jack Black's best performance. And yeah, I uh, I really would love for everyone to watch School of Rock because it's a five out of five movie. There are so many amazing quotes. Cello, you got a bass, probably being the best one. But yeah, I love School of Rock. And uh, I wanted to do a, a rest in peace to Kevin Clark a.k.a. Freddie Jones, the drummer in the band. Thank you for amazing memories and uh, being a part of this amazing film that I will continue to re-watch for the rest of my life and I will continue uh, to think about and, uh, and, yeah, be touched by as I continue. And if you, have, if you have your own thoughts on the movie, if you are like my age and you saw it when you were young or just generally, uh, I'd love for you to write into the show at radiomikepod at gmail.com and let me know uh, what, what you thought and how the movie touched you because it really touched me. Um, and I think that's evident by how I respond to it now to this day. Like goosebumps on the verge of tears at moments, even though it's not really a very sad film. It's quite an uplifting film, but... Yeah, I love this movie so much. A couple more updates from last week. Uh, Radio Christina with a K, welcome to the radio family. I did a misheard song lyrics last week about the Maroon 5 song, She Will Be Loved, where I thought at the start where it's beauty, beauty queen of only 18, she had some trouble with herself. And I thought it was 18 sheep. A lot of people, apparently this is a very common misheard lyric. Radio Christina with, with a K said, it will always be 18 sheep radio, Mike. That's how I've always sung it. We also last week started the gumball arama which is uh, where I plan on emptying a gumball dispenser from, uh, from at a shopping center. We're about halfway there in donations. I predicted we need about $100. We've raised about 50. If anyone listening wants to just donate $1 for five gumballs, that would be amazing. PayPal.me slash It's Radio Mike. Donate there. Gumball Arama will happen very soon after lockdown. It might be a bit of a shorter episode today, but there are a couple more things I did want to talk about. Video viewers, you will notice that uh, the 20th century board, which is a white board that we use to keep track of all the goals of the show, uh, has been located. I talked about a few shows ago that it was missing for a while in my move and uh, I have located it. There are a bunch of goals in there, but what I've, what I have, uh, what I've realized is that in my attempt to keep track of goals of the show on the 20th century board, I feel as though I've purposely been trying to find unachievable goals, right? 
Complete the Pilkey bibliography. Still achievable. We will be doing that this year. Excursion to Wonderland in Sydney, the abandoned theme park. Like, I want to say that will happen, but I also don't know if it'll happen. I'm going to rub it, rub it off, and we might just leave that to happenstance. We might just leave that one. Vance Joy appearing on the show to do his the Riptide movie segment can happen. Watch Mr. Megorium's Wonder Emporium will happen. Get Pasta with Sam Gallup will happen. Go to Loch Ness in Scotland. That's a long-term goal. Really doesn't need to be on the 20th Century Board. And the William Kennedy Farm Project. Again, if you meet someone out there in the real world called William Kennedy, I implore you to ask them if they are the same William Kennedy that did not finish their farm project in grade two. Um, but we will rub that off. Because we also have the Monopoly game, gumball Arama, Eating It Chicken Episode 2.0. There's lots of stuff going on, and I don't know if I can really sustain it at the moment. But that being said, I did want to talk about the Friends reunion before we go. Um, did anyone watch it? It was amazing, wasn't it? I, I am not the biggest Friends person. Like, I've seen a lot of Friends because it was like, one of those shows that just used to always be on TV when I was growing up. So you know all the characters, you know what it's about. Um, But it wasn't until like 2015 or 16 or something that I decided to just watch all of Friends through. Um, And it is an amazing show. It's super funny. Chandler objectively is the best character. Let's not, let's not lie. We all know that Chandler is the best character in Friends. Um, And I guess for that reason, like, I wasn't expecting to love the Friends reunion. Like, I, I I was like, oh, yeah, I'll definitely watch it. But I don't think, like, it'll hit me that hard. But it did. I loved it. I was always definitely more of a Seinfeld guy. And it seems like most people are one of the other. One or the other, sorry. A Seinfeld guy or a Friends guy. Um, Definitely a Seinfeld guy. But, you know, Friends really nailed it on the head with, like, the soap opera-esque kind of cliffhanger episodes and love stuff that Seinfeld just never had. Um, But I guess that was the point of Seinfeld to not be what, to not be that, to not be what Friends literally was. Um, And then I guess before I watched Friends through, I always, and still am, a How I Met Your Mother guy, because I feel like How I Met Your Mother was very much Friends 2.0. But I love How I Met Your Mother, another show I want to watch all through. And, like, it definitely gets very weak towards the last few seasons. But, like, the first four or five seasons of How I Met Your Mother, are uh, there are so many laughs. Uh, I don't know why I'm suddenly talking about How I Met Your Mother, but I was watching an episode the other night, which is where, um, I think it's season four, episode one, and Ted has proposed to Stella, who is one of the girls he was dating, um, and... He, she tells him that she's never seen Star Wars and then it instantly cuts to this great quote from Marshall, um, t- who is Ted's friend, if you haven't seen the show. Uh, I, I'll just cut the audio in here because I, I, I won't be able to do it justice, but this is just an amazing moment. She's never seen Star Wars? Ted, the only people in the universe who haven't seen Star Wars are the characters in Star Wars and that's because they lived them, Ted. That's because they lived the Star Wars. You got to calm down. So I love How I Met Your Mother, but... I, I really like Friends. I want to watch it all through again. But suddenly, like, since I started watching Friends and I did a cover of the Friends theme song, which maybe I'll put in here. Yeah, I'll put it in here. Why not? It's on my Instagram as well. Um, so here's that. So no one told you life was going to be this way. Your job's a joke. You broke. Your love life's to your way. It's like you're always stuck in second gear. When it hasn't been your day, your week, your month, or even your year, well, I'll be there for you. But now my my Instagram feed is literally all uh, friends memes. And I'm just like, wow, Instagram just thinks I love friends because my whole feed is friends stuff. But yeah, I uh, I loved the reunion. Uh, Ma- Matthew Perry, I feel like a lot of people are talking about him, but I feel like he was just quiet and reserved and didn't want to make a huge fuss about the whole thing. 
Uh, Matt LeBlanc was definitely like the most into it. Like he loved it. And I don't know, it was just cool seeing them kind of aged and uh, like finishing up their careers and looking back on the show that made them famous because it would have, it would have been like this huge thing, like being in your early twenties and just getting cast in this sitcoms, not in this sitcom, knowing that like so many sitcom pilots are being shot and written and trying to get up and only like one in like 200 probably becomes probably like one in 500 sitcoms become what friends Seinfeld how I Met Your Mother, Big Bang Theory. Not not that I particularly enjoy Big Bang Theory, but I think there's no denying it was one of the best, like the most popular sitcoms ever. Um, you know, only one in like 500 sitcoms become what Friends is, like a cultural phenomenon. Like Friends is, is way bigger than How I Met Your Mother, I feel. Um, Friends and Seinfeld, I think, are the two pinnacle 90s sitcoms. I don't think there was any bigger sitcoms than that that are still so culturally relevant today. But... I really enjoyed the reunion and there was lots of laughs. You find out that, that David Schwimmer who played Ross and Jennifer Addison, who played Rachel actually had a crush on each other during the shooting and were channeling like their love for each other through their characters. And I think that's amazing. Um, And yeah, just like Lisa Kudrow is so funny. Phoebe is such a funny character. I really want to watch it all again. But that goes back again to what I said at the top about me thinking that that's a waste of time. But maybe I should just do it. Like I was re-watching episodes of How I Met Your Mother last week and it was really fun and I loved it and reliving it was amazing. Um, so maybe I just should like just just toss my anxieties out the drain of like wanting to consume everything in the world and just do it. Um, but yeah, the Friends reunion was awesome. Also this week is E3. E3 is the biggest gaming convention like in the West and they reveal a bunch of new gaming things and uh, I'm really excited for that. I will be staying up because it's obviously American time so most of it's in the AM Australian time. I'll be staying up really late and watching that so if anyone would like to join me in the Discord please feel welcome to do so Uh, particularly the Nintendo conference because I'm obsessed with Nintendo and I will be doing uh, a bunch of YouTube stuff hopefully around what happens at E3. Let's do this. The plug. It is a shorter episode, which I hope is okay. Mainly just because, um, one, I am still pretty burnt out and uh, I feel like my brain is moving a bit slower in the past few weeks. Maybe because of lockdown. Also because it's winter here in Melbourne and it's like really cold and like, I don't know, something about, I, I guess like it sounds nice to be stuck inside during winter in Melbourne and being locked down. But it's just like, I don't know. I feel really low energy at the moment. And I feel like also there's not that much to talk about just generally because it's been locked down and no one's really doing anything. We're not seeing anything. We're not going into work or anything like that. Uh, But plugs, I have a bunch of plugs. Um, Obviously go and binge Harry Potter and the boys. Go and subscribe to my YouTube channel, Radio Mike. A bunch of stuff there, including the fifth episode of my monthly movie vlog which is Mike's monthly movies which goes up every month on YouTube go and check them all out just type it in on YouTube uh Patreon if you want to support the show head to patreon.com slash radio Mike you can support the show for as little as a dollar a month and it really helps from now on all the patrons will get a shout out at the end of each episode so to Gannon Bort, Christina with a K, Labrini, Pat Hamilton, Reese Hawker, Alex Guy, Danny Williamson, Scott Izzard, Dr. Nick, Georgina Lamming, Liz Jeffrey, Freya, Ryan K, Kyle Scott, Nathan Little, Adam Aitken and Katia Fenton thank you so much for being patron supporters of this show and um there is a dating podcast that I used to work on in 2019, which is back. I am on the first two episodes. It is called Finding a Unicorn. Go and check that out as well. It's very funny. Um, Please donate to Gumballarama, paypal.me slash it's radio mic, just a dollar. If you're listening right now, just donate a dollar right now. I dare you. Uh, But for now, I will leave it there. We'll be back next week. And uh, my name has been Radio Mike. This podcast has been the inside of my mind. Don't block the MDF. We've still got to do the MDF sting. Um, so that's coming up as well. Got to put that on the goal board eventually. Um, I'm a very kind young man and some of your older staff would, would learn a lot from me. Don't lie to me because I'll see you. Um, I'll see you in the Dream Factory and Will Kennedy, finish your farm project, mate. Catch you later, guys. Thanks for listening.